Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to Heinz Art Webinar, Heinz Podcast, call it as you will, uh, the, whatever you want to call it. It's the regular deep dive into the weird and wonderful world of strata and management rights in Queensland. So my name's Chris Heinz. I'm the director of strata consultancy firm Strata Solve. That's stratasolve.com.au. And as always, right alongside Frank Higginson, partner at Heinz Legal, which is the premier provider of legal advice to the strata industry in Queensland. Frank, welcome. Hello, Chris. Hello, everyone. What's been happening, Frank? Um, surprisingly enough, uh, in the last week, I've discovered Amazon. So it has been around for a couple of decades now. Uh, yes. I've discovered you can you can just press buttons and buy books at will. So over the last uh, week, I've had books arriving at all hours of the day and night being tossed all over the front yard, stairs, whatever. Um, and I don't know how people do that in Strata because I've got to say the delivery people aren't that crash hot in making sure they're put in places that they couldn't be thieved or picked up yeah. by stray birds or rained on or whatever. It's extraordinary. Because what it's you like see in, yeah, in high rises is that you... you there's usually in the lobby, there's usually this area where all of the post is basically quarantined. Uh, and so God knows if you are waiting for a particular book that you're really keen on getting, you a bit of a lucky dip to make sure it actually gets there, I would have thought. But, uh, yes. Um, yep. Excitement, though. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, Love my books. Well, and there's also nothing which beats the thrill of arriving home to find a package or going to collect a package somewhere. I think there's a lot to be said for that. We're not talking about postal services today, though. Uh, talk about something else. Um, today we are talking about body corporate minutes. Um, I'm trying to get a go. We're going to go into what goes wrong with minutes and then how to actually make good minutes. A um, bit of housekeeping, though. Uh, for those listening in live via YouTube, you can post your questions live in the YouTube chat and we'll endeavour to answer them. And as always, Frank, we welcome those questions. Uh, keeps us on our toes, keeps us really thinking. We'll usually get some, some doozies there. Uh, for those listening in later via the podcast while you're walking the dog or washing the dishes or, or reading, Frank, your new books, uh, you can find all the notes and links that we refer to at heinzlegal.com.au. So, strata minutes. On the face of it, Frank, not the world's sexiest strata topic. No, but it's certainly one that's full of dispute. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's just, um, I suppose if you're looking at the corporate history of anything or the, I suppose, you know, we keep things in our brains, remember things from years ago, you don't necessarily document them or whatever it might be. Um, in terms of a body corporate, particularly as people come and go over the months, years, decades, um, sure. the minutes are the only thing that represent the corporate knowledge of that being. So, and that's of course been our body corporate. So it's um, really important that they're right, that they're accurate, that they're kept, um, that they're not lost. Um, and I know we've had a couple of really horror stories, I suppose, in a sense where, you know, we're acting for bodies corporates in matters of dispute that have, um, you know, the genesis of the dispute being many, many, many years gone by. And I've got to tell you, when you're acting for a body corporate and you've got someone on the other side, alleging certain things, and you go to your client, body corporate, and say, well, these are the allegations. What have we got from a record perspective to disprove or refute what it is that they're actually alleging? And there's no minutes, or there's no record of them, because your committee at that point in time wasn't the committee five years ago. Uh, it puts the body corporate in a really, really difficult position. But one person saying, I know because I was there that this happened, and we've got no ability to say otherwise, on the other hand, it's really hard. So like in a pure lawyer's sense, that to me is one of the most important reasons for them. That's right, Frank. And I think that fundamental aspect of the minutes carries through to any kind of strata dispute because they're, they're crucial to the dispute resolution process because that's the start point. Uh, not only do they reflect what the decisions were and how they were made, they, are the, they indicate other factual information, or at least you hope they indicate other factual information. 
really they're about the who what where when how and why uh of anything that transpires any any kind of decision making process that happens at that strata scheme um they're also one of the primary ways in which strata schemes communicate amongst themselves as well aren't they uh, it's you know th there are many pieces of communication that float around in strata but minutes remain constant don't they frank they do you know they're one of those statutory things that need to go certainly for general meetings i mean everybody corporate should have at least one set of minutes a year which is the the agm minutes uh, beyond on that you can get a little bit loose but any committee decisions meetings certainly should go to all owners and it's pretty um, I'd say rare for a body corporate not to have some form of committee decision making throughout the course of the year and discussion and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, but when you do look at um, the communication piece, this will be minutes are probably the prime the, the default, certainly the default option, and I'd say probably the primary option for most bodies corporates in Queensland. You might put on front of it a circular from the committee about a particular yeah. issue or it might be here's the the chairperson's covering letter about whatever it was for the agm and beyond that there's probably not a whole lot of additional material that goes around no that i think that's right frank and then there of course there's the sort of the higher level conceptual issue around this because people get upset about minutes because the minutes are the record aren't they? And then, Frank, it's a bit like having your day in court. We know how people get really worked up about that. I'm having my day in court. I'm going to set the record straight. I'm going to say how it really was. That's how minutes are, aren't they? Sort of. <laughs> and, that, and that's, I think, the, the, the difference we're, we're talking about here in Strata. And again, which we're going to get to what the legislation actually says, um, full and accurate of the words. If everyone wants to put something away in the uh, corner of your mind, that's what legislation requires. And obviously, some detail around that. But like when you go through a court proceeding, you can go and purchase the transcript afterwards. So there's the the court stenographers um, these days. I think they probably record it um, and then it gets sent to wherever it is, so you don't need the stenographer in the room. But at the end of every day, you can go go and pay a um, day's transcript fee and every yep. single word that has been said by who will be on the record now that's not what happens in in body corporate minutes and i suppose there's a resourcing thing with that but also it's not really necessary but that's maybe you know sometimes and mate i suppose we both do help clients in terms of arguing about what is and is and should be and isn't in minutes and maybe that's the genesis for some of those things i don't know oh, I not too many people have been through court proceedings yeah. No, I, I suspect you're right. I suspect there would be quite a number of people who would imagine that's what the minutes would say and then get quite shocked uh, that they don't. Well, on that topic then, what are the legislative requirements around minutes? Well, you've, first of all, you've got to clarify what we're talking about here. We're talking about a general meeting, which is a meeting of all owners, uh, or a committee meeting, which is simply the meeting of the elected or nominated committee. There's a world of difference, isn't there, Frank, between the two things? I'm going to cover off general meetings in a... Yeah, just a, a very brief discussion because it's actually pretty simple what a uh, general meeting minute should be. Absolutely. It's, and this is the joys of general meeting agendas. They go out to owners 21 days before the meeting. The motions are on the agenda. It's yes, no or abstain. Done. And, and I think one of the big things for me with general meetings is, um, and I'm not sure whether it's in software or just historically it's happened, you do see agendas that have at the back end of them the last item after committee uh, nominations and voting if needed be, if needs be, general business. Yeah. There's no such thing as general business at committee, at general meetings. There's no ability for, we've, meetings over. The moment the committee is elected, it's done. So if everyone wants to sit around, have a chat about whatever it is, go for your life, but that's not something that ever should be on the meeting minutes of the general meeting. It yeah. might be notes for the committee to start their next committee meeting. You know, Chris has an application for a pet that's going to be arriving. That doesn't go on the general meeting minutes. It will go on the committee agenda next time around. That, but that's, a, I think, yeah. a common misconception. And indeed, Frank, it's, a, it's where things go wrong. If you think of it this way, the more information that you include, the greater the chance that that information can be misconstrued in one way or another, whereas the fewer uh, portions of content that you provide, the less chance there are for holes to be picked in that. 
basically. So yeah. the more detail you give, the more one leaves themselves open to be held up to challenge. Um, and that is largely it when it comes to general meetings. And of course, there's all of the factual stuff, such as who was present, who voting papers, proxies, apologies, time, date, place, that kind of thing. Then there are committee minutes, which are the yeah, they're very different in, in this particular case. Um, and one of the one of the good summaries of committee meeting minutes and, and indeed the minute situation is the newsletter that Frank, I know Heinz Legal did not that long ago, and we'll put a link up to that uh, in the chat function in a minute. Uh, but as you said, Frank, uh, no provision for general business. There's also no provision for fulsome, complete, or every word spoken or similar descriptors. So, for example, uh, there should not be committee meeting minutes which go, then Mavis said, and then Fred added, and then Ernest said, mm. that kind of thing, should they? No, that's what stenographers are for in court systems. That is absolutely not what should be in committee meeting minutes I, I think in both of our views and again i suppose and this is the difficulty and there's a balance to this in terms of what is full and accurate mm -hmm. but my you know where i get to with if, if someone wanted to do that in a sense there's no prohibition against it no. like go for your life um i don't think the legislation requires it and then as you were saying before chris the difficulty is if you if you do record the conversation between mavis fred and ernest and then you don't go and record the conversation between Chris, Frank and David, mm. why not? Why, why is one conversation more important than the other? So if you're going to mm. do that, to me, you've got to be consistent with it all. Where do you draw the line anyway? Um, like, you know, if Mavis, Fred and Ernest have a 20 minute discussion uh, about balustrades for argument's sake, that's fine so when when do you draw the line is it the gist of what mavis fred and ernest have said or is it every single utterance that comes from their mouths there was general discussion about balustrading with points made for and against primarily for dot 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 against dot 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 yep. that that might be it you know and again yep. it's all contextual this stuff isn't it you've got to read the room you've got to get the temperature of the the body corporate as a whole and make sure that whatever you're doing is accurate and fair. So let's establish those. I'm going to put up a couple of links for you in a moment. We'll put up uh, one link to what the standard module, uh, equivalent provisions of other modules, requires uh, for committee minutes. That's section 71 of the standard module. And then section 117 uh, for general meeting minutes. We'll put up those links in a second. Um, and as you say, Frank, and I think our point, we're going to keep making this point throughout this broadcast, where there's deviations from the process and from the provisions as set out, then it's open to interpretation. And uh, that's where things can get a bit tricky. Um, where do the arguments start then? So we've talked a lot about how things go wrong. Where do those arguments start? Well, they start everywhere. Basically. Absolutely. That's not what I said. That's not what the motion was. That's not what we agreed. That's not what the voting was. Those weren't the right proxies. Where's the returning officer? Who was the returning officer? I didn't say that. <laughs> so the I committee think, hasn't resolved yeah. to do that. Yeah, no, that no. So it all it all starts out basically, doesn't it, at the first level? Um, arguments about factual issues. Uh, and, and that might be something has been recorded incorrectly or something was left out or information is factually incorrect. So, for example, if you meant to record Mary Smith, but instead you wrote Mavis, okay, that's an error. Uh, and relatively simple to correct that kind of error. I think, Frank, the bigger issue comes when the arguments in the minutes are about nuance. Absolutely. And I think um, for me, one of the big things that um, comes up a lot, you know, we got the error, you know, we're mm -hmm. recording Chris Irons as the owner of lot 54, when actually he wasn't the owner of lot 54. He was there as a representative of the owner of lot 54 and the owner of lot 54 is Frank Higginson. So yeah. if it went into the minutes incorrectly, to me, you have to correct that. 
So you might have people say to you, no, 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 you're changing the minutes. No, what I'm doing is making sure that the minutes are accurate. So mm -hmm. correcting mistakes that are patently obvious is something the body corporate should do, regardless, in a sense for me, of how long after the minutes actually, that, that's realised. Because the minutes need to be a record of what happened. So, not... so Frank, when, yeah. when, I, when I was commissioner, Frank, that used to happen with adjudicators from time to time. They, you know, they're human and they would record lot 55 and it should have been lot 54. Hmm. There's a, a thing, I think it's called the slip, rule which enables yep. them to go thank you yes uh you enables them to go back and correct a patently obvious factual error but i think where it gets a bit more difficult though is correcting something that is more subjective in nature um yeah uh tone or inflection or inference or interpretation or That's... feeling words chris feeling words the committee was dissatisfied with the response from the owner, were they? Mm. Is that what a committee can be? Used or is to that be. something what a person can be? The chairperson yeah. was dissatisfied, or is it the committee? I think we're in agreement on this one, Frank, that the committee cannot have feelings. No, no, they, they make they decisions. Can't. They're not yeah. emotive beings. Yeah, I, I, I had a client recently who forwarded me a copy of minutes they've received, and that's what it said. Uh, the committee were surprised by lot owners' um, incoming email. Really? Um, quite apart from there being absolutely nothing in the email to be surprised about, um, it's not up to a committee to be surprised. Um, no. No. So, and then instantly, that phrase is a fighting phrase, isn't it? Well, you oh, shouldn't have been surprised yeah. because I gave you plenty of notice and I've been complaining about it for six months. Yeah. So I don't know why you, but why your group of idiots is surprised. Well, I mean, that's what the client contacted me about, Frank. What do I do about this? Um, you know, so that's that, that therein, that's where the issues start. Then I think, um, Frank, there's the separate issue about things being systemic. So if there are consistent arguments or consistent problems about minutes, committee minutes in particular, then to me, uh, I'm interested to know what you think, that suggests that there are deeper problems occurring. Would you agree? Yeah, and I think probably at that stage, that's probably because opinions are bit, my, my immediate take, and of course, there's gonna be a bunch of different reasons for this, but my immediate take would be it's because opinions are being expressed as opposed to facts. Who yeah. was there, what time we started, what time we closed, all that stuff is factual. The moment, particularly at you know, general meeting level, we can't do this, but at committee meeting level, it's going to be a bunch of stuff going in that obviously has the capacity to wind people up and people being people, maybe they're putting it in to wind other people up. And I, think and I suppose, mate, yeah, this is right. the strata manager has a really important part to play in these things. Obviously, they're there to give advice around what it is we're talking about today. Ultimately, they're not responsible for what goes out. That's the committee's chairperson's responsibility about what goes out but some tempered guidance there from time to time is probably a good thing particularly in these systemic type issues you, you read my mind because that's what i was basically just about to say frank that when a strata manager is preparing those minutes and they're using those feeling emotions word that tells me that that manager has gotten perhaps too close mm. to the situation uh or they've started to absorb some of the issues that are going on in that building uh, and so they've started to absorb the subjectivity of it, if you want to think of it in those terms. Um, now, I guess what we're trying to say there really is that minutes might be the symptom rather than the cause of a problem yeah. in that scenario. Here's a bit of a thought provoker for you, Frank, before we get on to best tips, uh, best practice, and we also got a couple of questions there as well. If the minutes are not entirely accurate, but the actions uh, that occurred everybody's okay with them surely that's all that matters you'd almost say it's a decision by conduct wouldn't you i think and they and there's the thing are we are we doing something that's inconsistent with the minutes so where's the inconsistency is it because what's in the minutes or is it what we're doing and either way i'd say you've probably got to go back and make sure that they are that, that those two things match up so we go and correct the minutes to reflect the decision that we're now operating on or we go and make a different decision that reflects the manner in which we're operating. Yeah. But either way, the, the inconsistency is a potential source of dispute at some stage. 
Absolutely, Frank. Um, yeah, a few few questions popping up there. We will get to those, everyone, but we're going to get to this part now. So the best practice tips on getting the best or the optimal minutes that you possibly can. So let's try this from, a, I guess, a process of elimination and a methodical approach. First of all, first step has got to be, are your minutes including all of the things required under legislation? So you go back to the minutes that, oh, sorry, you go back to the legislation that we posted a little earlier in the modules. Um, do you have all of those things that you are required to contain? That's a yes, no question at that point. So if you don't, you need to include them. If you do, then what, Frank? Well, then it's a question of what colour you're adding from a um, committee perspective. So again, a general meeting, we've covered that. It's just yes, no, maybe, no general business done, closed, next. I suppose from a, and I think really for me, the question from a committee perspective, if you are going to include something that adds colour, why? Why? And this is this back to what's acting reasonably in a body corporate context. And again, that's an enormously wide question um, and is going to differ from building to building. But from a committee perspective, if you are putting something in minutes, why did you do that? And what's the justification for it? I think that's the question committees need to ask themselves. So if it is, you know, we wanted to record the divergent opinions between all of the lot owners about the different types of balustrading, and more importantly, the pros and cons that were discussed so that future owners can know that we considered those particular issues and we're not applying the pros and cons to any individual lot owner. And then we recorded the decision that was made. To me, that's probably getting towards acting reasonably. That's transparent, it's relatively clear. You know, it, it explains some things that you don't necessarily understand if you weren't at the meeting. Like that, that to me makes some sense. So there is an answer to that as to why. Yeah, I think that's right, Frank. And then following on very closely from that, take a look back at history. Have there been things included in minutes in the past which have caused problems? Or flip side of that, have there been things omitted from minutes in the past and mm. their omission has caused a problem? If so, then this goes towards whether or not you include them or don't include them again uh, this time around. Um, and I guess that one of, one of the last things you do, and this is almost at the perspective of sending them out or the point of sending them out, are the minutes free of hyperbole? Uh, thank you, Julia. Uh, hyperbole, exaggeration and personalisation. Is yeah, there anything in the Yeah, are there any feeling words in there? If so, they need to go out. Is there anything in there that's likely to inflame or insult or indeed defame for that matter? Uh, in which case, delete. Um, do you really need to be poking those bears on that occasion? And even the emission thing, you know, it, it, you might, someone might be particularly upset about something not being included for whatever reason that from a statutory perspective, you don't have to include, but from a body corporate perspective, it doesn't matter. So this is this is where a lot of our business comes from. Unfortunately, it's the, the committee at that point saying, no, we're not going to put that in because the act doesn't require it. And we're quite happy to poke you in the face with it. And the person on the receiving end of that gets wound up about it when yeah. all of this could be go away if that particular thing that didn't matter was included. It's just like those little things yeah. are unfortunately what keeps us busy. That's right, Frank. And sort of on that point, from the flip side, if you are the recipient of minutes that have left you unhappy, what do you do? And I think the very first step is to basically do what you just said, Frank, which is ask yourself if it matters or not. Does it matter? Is it going to be the hill you die on, that one? Um, I would say in the vast majority of cases, the answer is no, it doesn't matter. Uh, but if it does matter, then you bring it up with the committee because uh, they're the ones who sign off on it. Uh, be clear about the concern and what the change is that you're seeking and do it in a relatively respectful way, I'd, I'd argue. Um, but be very clear about the change. Uh, don't just say these minutes are crap. No, it's there is a problem with line blah, blah of the minutes and specify it. And then I guess, Frank, after that, if there's no response or refusal to amend or a refusal to correct the record, then you have your options to pursue it further, don't you? You do. And you've tried to self-resolve it. 
and the and the committee's ignored you. And I mean, we've just helped a lot owner do that in relation to a particular issue. Um, the committee did correct the record. Yeah. So there you go. No need. So it's sort of it, it's guys, you've got that wrong. This is this is what happened, and this is why it happened, and this is what it should be. So do it now, and they did. So Absolutely. you know. And I suppose there you go. There's the system working. Self resolution worked. Self resolution did work. But uh, question time. We actually got some pre questions on this one uh, this this time around, uh, and we've had this question asked by a few other people. So we'll address it. Is it up to the committee to decide how minutes are produced? Um, what do you reckon, Frank? What, what do you reckon? I think the inside the well, I suppose with the support of ideally a professionally competent body corporate manager, you've got a statutory regime that you've got to follow. And then after that, I think it is up to the committee to decide what goes in and how it goes in. And I think ultimately, like I think the chairperson's running the meeting. So it's the chairperson who, you know, is ultimately accountable or makes the ultimate decision on things. Oh, no, I'll take that back. There you go. I can disagree with myself. The committee minutes should really be approved by the committee. A decision if we've committee. got seven yep. people there, three of them say something happened, four of them say, no, no, that other thing happened. It's a vote about the accuracy of the minutes. And yep. I suppose, acting reasonably, if we've got a divergence of opinion and we've got no recording of the meeting, um, then maybe that gets noted in the minutes as well. We yep. think we decided this and we think we discussed this and there's a divergence of opinions about blah, blah. Yeah. I tend to yeah. agree, Frank. Um, you would think that in most cases it would happen by a process of omission, wouldn't you? I think in most cases it would be um, the minutes go out unless somebody violently objects, a member of the committee violently objects, which might happen in, in some schemes. Uh, but I tend to agree with you. It's a decision of the committee ultimately. Um, question from Bryce. Thanks, Bryce. Is an electric ballot of all owners a meeting? Yeah, can be. With the right resolution at general meeting level and committee level, meeting level, absolutely. But I think if you're asking, Bryce, is just a general ballot or a poll of people, is that a meeting? I would suggest probably not. It's got to be properly called. Yeah, particularly if you want to act on it. So there's no there's no issue with polling owners about what you what you think owners might want in relation to a particular decision. But that's never ever going to be a body corporate decision in its own right. Like give yeah. guidance to the committee yeah. about what they might put on an agenda if it requires general meeting approval, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, Judy, thank you. When minutes are being corrected following committee meeting, should the minutes be revised and then redistributed again to all owners? I would have thought so, right? So would I. Yep, absolutely. Because if what was sent was inaccurate, you should be correcting the inaccuracy, yep. which is by sending the revised minutes. Yep. Uh, and then, um, David, thanks for your question, which also, John, thank you for your questions. Uh, I think we've now answered that one. Uh, another question that came in beforehand, uh, in the absence of anything under body corporate legislation on drafts, can JOSC's model of a chair being part of the draft editorial be another accepted way forward? So for those of you unaware, JOSC is the author of a well-accepted and respected book on meeting processes, which I think an adjudicator has actually referred to in some context somewhere else. Um, I guess my take, I'd be interested in yours, Frank, is that if the body corporate legislation is silent, then it's quite reasonable for the committee to seek guidance from another text so long as the committee accepts that it is simply a form of guidance and it's not gospel per se. Absolutely. You know, and, I, and then it comes back to that. That to me is not an unreasonable way to approach a seeming gap in the legislation. Yep. That that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense to me too. We have just about come to the end today. Another another involved discussion by one and all. Uh, I guess um, there's a lot there to be said about minutes. So hopefully uh, those listening in have got something out of it. Um, you can find all the notes that we referred to and the links at heinzlegal.com.au. You can find me, that's Chris Irons, at strathersolve.com.au and you can find Frank at minesilegal.com.au or on your nearest golf course. Um, <laughs> but, well, it's speaking the truth. No, um, fair comment, yep. Yeah. Uh, with that, um, thanks everybody for tuning in. As always, greatly appreciated. Frank? Very much so. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Chris. See you all.